Okay, well, welcome back to uh, my favourite books. And for the first time, uh, I'm very excited to say that it's not just me talking about somebody else's book today. I'm getting a chance to interview uh, one of my dear friends, Luby, about her new book, which is this one here. Uh, it's called Cultural Emergence. Um, and we're going to find out what's inside there because I'm going to ask her. <laughs> I haven't had time to read the whole thing yet. So I've been a bit of a skimmer on this one because it's just coming out and I'm still trying to finish my book. Uh, but it looks extremely exciting. It's full of great pictures. And, uh, and more than that, actually, because um, for me, um, what's exciting about this particular new book, Luby's new book, is it, it brings together everything that she's written before along with a whole bunch of other things like the work of um, Joanna Macy and... Uh, oh, I've forgotten his name, Chris Johnston, Chris Johnson. <laughs> marvellous Chris Johnston, and um, all the work of um, things like Coyote's Guide, which is also a fabulous book, but very heavy and quite difficult to get in the UK. Um, anyway, so maybe ra rather than me just rabbiting on for ages, I'm going to ask Luby, what exactly is Cultural Emergence? Where did that title come from? Well, it was quite an emergent process, actually, but the the gave um, birth to that uh, title cultural emergence it was through a collaboration between myself and John Young so um, Coyote's Guide is written um, by John Young and other people and he's a deep nature connection specialist and he was looking at that question of what why are some cultures more nature connected than others and interested in this whole process of what he describes as cultural repair. And in permaculture, we have this, uh, you know, permanent agriculture and permanent culture. And it's like, what does that actually mean? And it's a bit of a fallacy, this idea of permanence in, the, in terms of culture. And actually, culture is much more of an emerging process, this organic um, process. So it's it, the, the, phrase cultural emergence came from this kind of intention of how do we emerge regenerative cultures how do we repair um, and make uh, cultures that are healthy and supportive and nourishing for everyone and so that's that was like the origins of the um of that and it was came through this emergence of and this synergy and connection between um the work I've been doing with people and permaculture and how do we use permaculture principles and design and then um, the practices that support deep nature connection and we so we asked ourselves what would be the the practices that support uh, cultural emergence what would be the principles of cultural emergence and over the last four years that's been a, um, a, a process and a journey and a story of harvesting collective wisdom to answer those questions to then formulate in the book and uh, share with the world. Right. Yes, it's, it feels very much like another practical book. You know, it's not a book to just read. It's a book that's full of, um, you, you call them activities, and what was the other phrase you used? Um, reflection questions questions for reflection and it's very much about I'm writing at the moment about systems and patterns as well from a different perspective very much a sort of physical landscape sort of thing and you're you're very much focused you've always been focused on how does that affect our culture our behaviors the paradigms we create in the world we see around us and why it looks like it does to us and what's particularly key i think is that nobody really up to the point that you wrote people in permaculture had looked at the people care side of permaculture it had been very much a case of i think in bill mollison's book he mentioned something about provision to basic needs of food water and shelter and that's sort of it and uh, but as has been pointed out by yourself and uh, others before we can't do the physical permaculture bit if we can't get on with each other and very often people will try to get together in intentional communities even with a shared goal of let's do this thing and within a year or two half the people have left <laughs> other people are coming and they've got slightly different ideas and we haven't been trained in our culture our western culture doesn't train us to live in community and you're taking on board 
and providing in this lovely framework with the new book a lot of wisdom from other cultures which in many ways for us in the west we don't relate to because we don't live or we don't connect to our history in the same way we've been so disconnected from nature and the that sort of appreciation of nature and that the importance of us looking after the world around us because it's not just about the beauty and honoring the fact that there's this amazing thing that we're immersed in this landscape of life but also that it directly affects us that whatever we put out there comes back and bites us on the backside sort of thing so um yes yeah, so <laughs> there i am waffling on again so um you, you very much talk about a toolkit and the book is very nicely structured around these different parts so you talk about a toolkit and these premises which essentially underline create the foundation do you want to say a little bit about the premises of the book of the cultural emergence yeah so one of the premises there is is like that we it's an ongoing process that that, that creating culture is this ongoing process mm. um, there's another premise is that humanity is part of the web of life and has a positive role to play in that. And that's hugely, um, you know, uh, can be a huge shift in thinking. Um, I know a lot of people are very disillusioned by the human race at the moment and really thinking, oh, you know, we're just heading for the destruction of the planet and the world would be better off without humanity and actually if we're coming from that thinking it is kind of a self-fulfilling prophecy then and it it you know it depresses us it um it makes us hugely pessimistic we have that we we're you know constantly finding stories that reinforce that belief and there's plenty around but if we turn that around and think actually we do have a positive role to play we can become part of the thri as pat mccabe calls it the thriving design for life that we have humanity has a thriving design that we aren't the only species on the planet that hasn't got a place in the web of life we have and and if we come from that set of thinking that premise then how we relate to nature how we see ourselves as individuals and collectively shifts dramatically and that shift can lead to all sorts of things so you say uh you know the 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 ma the what's manifest in the material world comes from uh, you know our thinking humankind thinking you know what the the chairs that we sit on the desks the computers the buildings we have that our agricultural systems they all manifest out of our cultural beliefs and our paradigms and our values and um, our priorities of what we, you know, what we focus our human ingenuity into creating. Is it? Do we focus our our ingenuity, human ingenuity, into creating better iPhones or or eliminating poverty? you know and that it's maybe not on either or how you know um but where do we put our priorities and that's where then the um you know the things in the material world shift so those premises sort of create the foundation then from the toolkit and they're, they're more but that's uh, a couple to get going with <laughs> yes yes it's it's very interesting this idea that humans are a problem we should get rid of them well, the Earth should get rid of them. But it's not us as human beings that are prob the problem. It's the some of the behaviours we're doing at the moment, because some of the things we do are still lovely. It's just a few of the things we're doing are creating a big mess from a yeah. social and environmental perspective. And so we just need to change those. I mean, Charles Eisenstein has a lovely quote about humans are kind of in the teenage phase and we're just playing with our, our gifts. Um, and we haven't quite figured out what we're doing yet and we're making a bit of a mess. But uh, our situation now is to find a way through that. And Bill Mollison talked about, you know, we know everything we need to know to fix the, the Earth situation. But what we didn't have so much of 
in the West at least was a, a cultural understanding of how to do that. And what you've done with your new book in particular has brought that really sort of the latest version of how we might do that, providing us with a lovely toolkit. So for me, it's, yeah, it's the latest version of this lovely kind of framework. And I think when, when you sit down and you spend a lot of time writing the book, and I know you do, you're very good at getting disciplined in writing the books. Um, what you're doing is you're taking time, it's taking you time, but you're putting things in a framework that just makes it a lot easier for the rest of us to just, okay, now I know what to do and I could. And yeah, so let's talk a little bit more about the book itself. So then, then the bulk of the book is these three um, phases, as you call them. And do you want to tell, say a little bit about these three different phases of cultural emergence? Yeah, so they're, they're the, the, the phases are challenge and awaken, move and invigorate and nourish and empower. And when we have a balance in, of those in our lives, it leads to more regeneration because we ha it leads to this emergence. So we're not stuck, we're not stagnant, we're moving forward and it's a regenerative process. It's renewal, it's re invigorating. Um, and so... It, you know, the, the challenge and awaken, it, it stimulates us, it gets us thinking. Um, you know, we've been very much in a challenge and awaken phase over the last 12 months, um, mm -hmm. collectively. Patterns have disrupted. It's like we're in cultural quicksand, what's happening here. But that can lead us then into, well, how do we move forward then? What's our vision? What, do, what can we use in terms of design process to manifest things in our lives? And then the nourish and empower phase is about connecting with ourselves, with other people, with the more than human world and how <clears throat> that can resource us for the other phases and we need to bring those into balance um and that's really i feel what one of the um you know my intentions moving into this new year is how do i nourish and empower myself and others and seeing that we have had a lot of this challenge and awaken how can we do more nourish and empowerment that can lead us then into more move and invigorate can lead us into effectively designing and yeah as you say moving out of that teenage that collective uh -huh humanity as teenagers into being productive and adults that can um look after the earth well yeah yeah <laughs> lovely thank you and so then in terms of the book's framework within each of those sections which is you know, they're quite big long sections you have these core routines do you want to say a little bit more about core routines yeah. So if we think of, of um, cultures as, um, uh, you know, habits and this web of patterns, you know, habits being patterns in our lives, yeah. pattern of thinking, patterns of behaving. So if we create these routines, these practices that we do regularly in our lives, and this is where it isn't just a book to read, it's a toolkit to use. If we use them regularly, then they become our personal culture and our personal culture then ripples out into the cultures we're part of. And so they become part of our, our, our own culture, part of this web of patterns that we have by doing them regularly. So I call them yeah, core routines from um, John's work in Nature Connection, what are the core routines yeah. of Nature Connection? And then what are the or, or practices, routines, the habits, patterns that we create in our lives? Yeah. Yeah. There's, there's a very lovely um, introduction by John in your book, honouring your work, which I, I really enjoyed reading. Um, yeah, yes, thank you. It's, yeah. <laughs> he's been really lovely to work with him and to have it cut it for it to come from this emergent space with, with him and with... Maddie Harland, who's, um, who's editor and your um, publisher as well as mine, and um, she, you know she's very much brought her wisdom into this from co-teaching, and I've been 
co-teaching with Starhawk as well. So, um, oh. and, and Andy Goldring. So a lot of other people have um, brought their wisdom into developing this toolkit as well. And then we have the principles of cultural emergence because in permaculture, we like the principles, <laughs> don't we? <laughs> we do. And, and, it's, and I think you call it something about principles and moving forth. So it's about how do we, that last part of the book, it's very much about creating sort of momentum really, isn't it? And how, where do we go from here? So. Exactly. And how do we do this on a small scale for ourselves? What are the, you know, the cultures of, um, you know, how do we create a culture of self-esteem, of trust for ourselves? Or how do we create a culture of collaboration in our family, for example? Uh, you know, how do we create a culture of, uh, safety in our neighborhood what are these cultures that we're trying to create how can we name them and help them to move forward and manifest yeah very much yes yeah, so it, it was nice for me as well to as i was say skimming through at this point but to come across you know so thinking differently so your seven ways to think differently which is one of those books that I remember getting through quite quickly because it's a relatively small book, but you know, fascinating. Um, but it sort of sat on its own to some degree, although it was sort of sort of attached to this one. Although, of course, there's a later, there's a newer version of this now, isn't there? There, 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 there is, yeah. So this is the second edition. The second edition. Yes. <laughs> so, but it sort of loosely attached itself to that. But within. The cultural emergence book this then becomes part of challenge and awaken because it's about how you look at the world isn't it and how you're thinking about what you're seeing and then your design web which i remember you talking about originally the design web was sort of something that was part of the book but it was the thing that most people seem to grab from the book and make use of in many really interesting ways and so then that becomes that's become part of um is it move and, invigor move and invigorate section, isn't it? So in here, it has, yeah. Um, so it was really nice for me because I love putting things together. I'm very much the kind of person that I don't do jigsaws, but I see the world like a jigsaw. Of, ah, that this whole chunk over here joins to this chunk here, and look, they fit, and look, it's a bit missing. So what is that bit? And it feels very much like this book has been has done that. So you spent time making the jigsaw of all the parts um, the parts that you've you've come up with and created and parts that other people have that fit nicely on there um, and that for me is what feels particularly exciting for me about reading this book although I'll probably be told off if I spend too much time reading it at the moment um, because yeah, that's be writing, the, writing the book as well <laughs> Yeah. It, it seems to me looking at the structure of the book that that's what you've done is you've just pulled it all together in a really nice way that it fits beautifully um, and so it's absolutely why I would thoroughly recommend anybody particularly if they've read any of your other books before but even if they haven't doing any kind of permaculture that it's key for us to understand this bit because it is all about how do we work together in order to create a better world in the physical sense as well because this is the bit that we haven't done very well yet so yes totally thank you and it's uh, yeah i mean uh, as you uh, your your quotes on the back of the book are there of it, it belongs in the hands of every change maker yeah. and uh, and in the hands it's a doing book and it's yeah. it's it's not just about like you know we know we say that permaculture isn't just about the garden and it can be used permaculture can be, be used for designing anything and yeah. what i really love from hearing people's stories that have re read people in permaculture it's like oh and then i went to i went on to use your design web for caring for my elderly parent or for moving house or for changing jobs or setting up my own business or starting coaching other people or you know and it's uh, it's suddenly uh, you know for learning a new language and all these things that I wouldn't have necessarily thought of to design people have gone yes I'll use this and and so and then uh, because I'm a diploma tutor as well, I get to read lots of other people's <laughs> designs and, and teaching it. And so then I've, uh, I've actually sort of upgraded that 
information that was in people and permaculture yeah. about the design web for culture emergence is like what are the questions that i've been asked what are the sticking points what are the things that mm -hmm. people haven't quite understood that i've needed to explain more and so i've put all of that uh, in, into um this book as well maybe not all of it but it's you know it's it's an upgrade on the design web as well so um they they fit together yeah well i just want to say congratulations it's uh, fantastic to see it in print i'm very excited about it and would definitely recommend it to anyone doing community stuff permaculture stuff anyone who wants to even just get on with their neighbors <laughs> it's uh, uh permanent publications it's out now and uh, it's a very lovely book thank you luby and uh, all the best with whatever you're doing this year thanks aranya bye-bye